Assalamu alaikum and uh, and uh, very good uh, morning eh? very good day to everybody uh, so today we are going uh, to continue our lecture from the previous week eh? so <coughs> the previous week is uh, regarding environment eh? so today we are going to look at <coughs> uh, regarding portfolio eh? uh, portfolio inside property management eh? so if you can see from the introduction uh, properties has been linked to investment since property has been used to generate income and uh, since property is said to have the capability to edge against inflation uh, property has been included in the investment portfolio eh? uh, so this is uh, another aspect that uh, we can we can try to broaden up eh? in fact in our university we have a uh, a much more specialized section no, of uh, uh, aspect of investment eh, whereby we have a master of property investment in uh, UITM Shalam eh. but nonetheless uh, for 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 the aspect of bachelor degree level we will try to touch a little bit eh, regarding of the portfolio or even the investment prospects eh, inside property management okay so this is uh, some of the steps uh, that we can try to adopt uh, uh, like the first one is trying to develop strategies uh, step number two uh, having the acquisition of the properties uh, step number three the asset management and uh, step number four the disposition uh, so asset management property management uh, is part of the, of uh, the larger aspect of asset management uh. so uh, some of the overview uh, of property investment in Malaysia uh, so uh, it is grown uh, significantly from the early 2000s uh, since the recovery of economic recession in 2008 uh. so previously uh, it's more focused on the traditional ownership uh. the traditional one is like uh, you directly acquisition uh, the, the, the properties and then you uh, lease or rent uh, or rent out uh, and get some income uh. You develop and hold, uh, do you develop and also sell the properties. Uh. But nowadays, the investment aspect has been more diversified, uh, whereby uh, people are looking uh, at the investment exit for capital rollovers, uh, reducing exposure in the asset or project on uh, project ownership, trying to expand their business, and also getting more participation from institution or public, uh, whereby. Uh, is 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 becoming more progressive eh? people can uh, people can invest eh, in properties without having uh, uh, to fork out a lot of money eh? like in the traditional sense eh? where in the traditional sense uh, we buy uh, like uh, a condominium a 500,000 ringgit condominium in Ipo and then we rent out eh, for 2,000 ringgit per month eh? so we pay at the bank 1,500 ringgit per month uh, so we can get 500 ringgit of profit uh, but nowadays as the as the aspect of investment is becoming broader uh, people can invest 500 ringgit per month uh, and maybe in the end of the year they can get a yield of 20 or 30 ringgit uh, uh, so some by by using this uh, more progressive investment uh, uh, we can start with the low capital uh, and then maybe can get uh, a fixed revenue or even uh, a very uh, high revenue afterwards okay so uh, real estate management triad right? uh, like I said before uh, our profession uh, uh, starts at here uh, the property uh, management division uh, whereby we manages the property uh, we handle the day-to-day -day operations uh, and a bigger aspect of that is for you to manage the asset eh? actually in the course of property management we just don't want just to focus on the day-to-day uh, -day running of uh, properties only eh? but we wanted you to uh, have a bigger aspect or bigger and wider areas for you uh, to manage in eh? like you manage an asset eh? whereby you manage uh, multiple properties and you monitor for properties performance eh? like uh, like in our quiz before eh? uh, like you manage the asset of Tabung Haji in the northern region eh? you you have uh, Tabung Haji properties in Perlis in Penang in Kedah eh? in Perak eh? uh, so you manage 
all of these uh, properties and then you become the head eh? and then you have the property managers uh, or the executives working eh, for you okay other than that is the portfolio manager eh? uh, acquisition as disposition capital improvement so this is usually towards the the top level management eh? from uh, it's a step for you eh? it's a step for you to 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 get through the, the corporate ladder eh? portfolio you you maybe you manage the whole the whole division of tabung haji properties in malaysia eh? bigger than that you manage uh, tabung haji properties in the whole wide world eh? in saudi arabia eh? uh, in malaysia in indonesia eh? in uh, united kingdom and whatsoever okay uh, so some of the processes you can uh, try to implement uh, we have uh, various steps uh, like uh, macroeconomic uh, analysis, the risk management analysis that we already covered before, um, portfolio optimization, security selection, and others. Okay, so some of the people involved. Uh, uh, this is uh, important for us to know uh, because usually when we talk about portfolio investments, we talk about big organization, big corporations. Uh, so big corporations doesn't necessarily have just five or six number of staffs. Eh? They have uh, maybe hundreds or even thousands. Eh? So if the, these very big and also public organizations, eh, they have a lot of uh, they have a lot of departments. Eh? They have a lot of branches eh? whereby they can have the executives, they can have the managers, uh, they can have the real estate team, the board of trustees. The board of directors, eh, CFO, COO, CEO, eh, and uh, chairman of the board of directors, whatsoever. Eh. Very much like the same eh, with uh, our own university. Eh, because our own university is a very big university. We have different levels of, of branches, eh, departments, and others. Eh. Okay, so like uh, you board of trustee. Eh, uh, the allocation for real estate limit the clarity on the role of real estate and um, uh, post allocation towards the asset classes. Okay, uh, all right. So investment and in property can be broadly divided into direct or indirect investment. So uh, for direct investment, uh, property becomes the commodity for the investors to purchase, to sell. Uh, operate, develop, let, and also lease. Uh, so this is more related towards, uh, like we discussed earlier, uh, it's more towards the traditional aspect. Uh, but uh, for the more progressive aspect of investment, it is can also be categorized into indirect investment, uh, whereby the property is uh, converted into the fractions of ownership or equity and being traded in a paper form. Uh, so usually in the property shares and also uh, real estate investment trust REITs, eh, whereby uh, in a layman's term is more like you pull up together the money from different shareholders. Eh. Like I have five five hundred ringgit, uh, another person have five hundred ringgit, then maybe uh, one thousand of us have five hundred ringgit. Eh, so we can get five hundred thousand ringgit. Eh. So five hundred thousand ringgit is enough maybe to purchase a small uh, shop or even as a, a condominium eh? and then the condominium is being led to another person uh, paying 2000 ringgit uh, and then uh, that 2000 ringgit can become a dividend to us eh? we will share the dividend 2000 ringgit share with uh, 1000 other person then maybe you can get uh, 2 ringgit per month eh? or even you calculate 2 times 12 months, eh, you can get 24 ringgit per year. Eh. So from that 500 ringgit that we invest in the first place, you can get uh, around 24 ringgit. So that is a very broad or even basic calculation. Eh. But if you factor in other calculations like the service charges, eh, like the uh, quit rents, eh, whatsoever, eh, you must deduct all of this also. Eh. Okay. But nonetheless, that is basically uh, uh, what uh, what uh, what the organization of these shares or even REITs are doing. Uh, so that is uh, on the small scale. Uh, but of course, when they can get the higher capital, they can uh, they can uh, invest in uh, much uh, 
higher value properties okay so some of the investors and uh, you can use uh, you can see or even read uh, like you have tabung haji you have aman haraya uh, you have permodalan uh, national berhad bnb uh, uh, you have kwsp you have bank rakyat uh, so this kind of organization is uh, is a very big organization uh, whereby they are uh, backed by investors uh, the public investors uh, people can purchase their shares uh, and most of this organization also is gl6 uh, whereby the government pump in the money uh, towards the organization using the public's uh, tax base money uh, and then uh, through the investments done everything you will come back and generate uh, revenue or profit eh, towards the government eh. so the government can in turn and the, the, uh, use the money for the development of the country hmm. other than that is we also have the property developers eh, like Sunway, Vomac, uh, MRCB eh. in Sri Skanda also we have MRCB, Sunrise, eh, Gokoland and uh, insurance companies also is part of uh, investors eh. Uh, if you cannot get financial funding from uh, uh, from uh, banking institutions, uh, even insurance companies, uh, they can give out uh, financial uh, financial loans uh, like Great Eastern, ING, MNI, uh, whereby people pay the insurance monthly to them, and they will repurpose the insurance money. Uh, they the, the funds of the insurance money is just not being pulled is just not being pulled and saved at the bank eh? but they will use it to generate income eh? and then uh, this kind of uh, generation of income uh, can be can be um, forwarded towards the shareholder eh? in terms of the revenue eh? other than that we also have foreign corporations like Aeon, uh, Capitaland, the Ascendas and others eh? uh, so these foreign corporations are also involved in uh, very in many and various types of portfolios in our country eh? uh, Kuwait Finance House, uh, Asia Equity Fund, eh? uh, REIT Managers, eh? Star Hill REITs, eh? Amanah Raya REITs, eh? uh, Capita Trust eh? and even uh, 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 KPJ REITs okay? uh, other than that land bankers eh? okay so reasons for indirect investment uh, is that because there is a rapid growth in the property and construction sector and having the demand for liquidity eh? because uh, sometimes using traditional or even direct investment uh, uh, investors cannot diversify eh? if something uh, happen in that particular part of the area that they invest eh? or even the location is not very good the prospect or development in that area is not very good so this kind of investors are stuck uh, uh, if they invest in um, uh, Tanjong Malim but suddenly Tanjong Malim has become a ghost town uh, nobody wanted to purchase properties nobody wanted to do business in Tanjong Malim so the investors they are already stuck uh, with the properties that they purchase uh, that they purchase uh, tradi traditionally uh, but as compared to indirect investment they can uh, diversify their, their, their own investment eh? so they can diversify eh? uh, in Tanjung Malim, in Ipoh, in Kuala Lumpur, in Sungai Bulo, in Kota Baru eh? so like the English saying eh? never put uh, the same egg eh? never put all of your eggs inside one basket eh? so if anything happens in that basket at least uh, if you put your eggs eh? elsewhere uh, then the, the the risk that you encounter will be lower okay so for us as a role of property managers eh, uh, of course eh, as a portfolio management uh, property management day-to-day -day operation is the smaller aspect eh? but if you can manage uh, the portfolio eh, the, the bigger aspects eh, you need to look at some of these items eh, like the strategy of the organizations uh, the governance of the organization, uh, the IT operations, the project management, the compliance, uh, legal department, uh, uh, and also uh, the demand for management, uh, like the human resource aspect, uh, whereby, uh, whereby you uh, uh, 
you 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 try to manage uh, to get the best staff in hiring okay so concern of property management for investment uh, uh, you need to look at some of the concern like uh, the financial forecasting the security the corporate real estate uh, the maintenance operation controlling of resource managing the tenants uh, so some of these concerns uh, we need to address uh, we need to address we need to always check uh, we need to always check and ensure that they are in control okay so uh, for property portfolio uh, property portfolio characteristics uh, uh, some of them look at the overall performance or condition of the portfolio and provide idea on how property management should be conducted in line with overall needs of the portfolio uh, whereby for asset quality it look at the individual asset in the portfolio and provide information on how individual asset perform in contributing to the overall performance of the portfolio uh, so if you manage portfolio and uh, and a broader aspect and uh, you manage the asset uh, the portfolio is the investment the asset is the uh, is the holding that you have acquired uh, so you have to manage this kind uh, these two also uh, okay so uh, for portfolio characteristics uh, uh, you should conduct the analysis so that uh, uh, you have uh, you have the philosophy or even style to manage the portfolio uh, how uh, uh, all of your investment in the REITs how are all your investment in the uh, uh, direct investment or even the traditional uh, investment can contribute towards uh, profit or even revenue uh, does your property in Ipoh make money does your property in Johor Bahru make money okay so the specification analysis also is uh, by we look at regional economic diversification the geographical diversification the property sectors eh, whether you invest more on residential eh, or commercial or even industrial or even agricultural eh, uh, you must try to diversify eh, and uh, manage them uh, as properly as you can okay asset size diversification eh? uh, trying to find out the operating margins the overheads okay so that one is more towards the aspect of portfolios whereby for individual asset eh? you try to pinpoint eh? uh, you try to pinpoint the the age of the properties assets quality eh? uh, you look at the average rent versus the market rent the expenses the assets expansion capacity or even the advantages or constraint of the physical location of your own asset uh, so portfolio is the bigger aspect the asset quality uh, is uh, more tailored towards your own your own properties that you have you have you have, you have purchased before uh, okay and uh, for us as a property manager also we need to have the ability uh, for us to uh, evaluate the property market uh, for us to conduct analysis and uh, to find out what is the locations vacancy rate the rental rate trend concession and occupancy cost supply and demand rate of new supply absorption trend uh. so this is why i put inside the assignment for you to find out also uh, uh, to find out so you must try to find out uh, uh, like if you use Sri Skanda, of course you are very familiar uh. You can also uh, already look at the trends of property market here but we we don't want you to just uh, be having the knowledge on Sri Skanda huh? we want you to have knowledge of Ipoh, Manjong, uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, Shah Alam, PJ and whatsoever so we must be uh, the expert uh, in all of these uh, geographical regions uh, so and try to find out the, this kind of information okay so if we look at REITs uh, uh, for, for, for portfolio management for REITs uh, uh, the management uh, must have uh, the aspect towards the maintenance uh, the facilities uh, uh, trying to get successful uh, property uh, investment portfolio eh? uh, for rate structure eh? you can look 
through. Eh? You can look through some of the read structures being used in Malaysia, eh? like uh, you uh, usually either you become uh, at this area or even you can become uh, this area or even the investment manager. Eh? Uh, the property management, the investment management services and others, the trustee, eh? the trustee, who is the trustee, eh? who is the custodian of the asset, who is the one who manages the asset, okay, the unit holder, eh? the investors, eh? so the unit holder is the one that pump in the money uh, to purchase these uh, properties and they will expect uh, a yearly dividend or even a yearly yield. Uh, revenue from the investment that they have conducted uh, so it is up to you the, as the rate manager to fulfill all of this uh, uh, like if you look at hectare rates uh, the trustee uh, uh, is being given uh, as a M trustee uh, the manager is hectare asset management uh, uh, for the property management aspect the the day-to-day -day operations of these properties that is being purchased by the read like subang parade and mahkota parade eh, they already appoint isrin and tan eh, as the property management company and then the investors of course they will expect eh, the dividend and other distribution so if you look at the organization of a read company then you can already know eh, what is their purpose eh, what is their uh, end goal uh, what is the end goal of having this kind of uh, very big indirect of, uh, investment organization okay uh, so it's quite similar also with amanah raya rates eh, whereby bumi putra commerce can become the trustee the unit holder uh, the manager is uh, jmf asset eh, uh, the property management company is malik and kamru zaman eh. so the prospect for you when you already complete your bachelor degree is that you can be involved uh, with this read organization so hectare reads mnr reads and then you will uh, you can become uh, yeah, the you can become uh, the, the, the 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 person in charge of, of several branches of the reads organization uh. so if you have the money of course you can directly become the unit holder uh. but if you wanted to get uh, the exposure towards the management of risk and you can either become the uh, property management department or even the, become the the REITs manager themselves maybe in the first years of working is the assistant manager or even the REIT executive uh, maybe 5 to 10 years time then you can you can go towards the, the, the management level uh. Okay, so general or investment objectives for the REITs, of course, eh, uh, you can read through uh, getting the returns, eh, um, having strong recurring rental income, eh, uh, increasing the, the property units value, eh, meaning in, uh, in 10 or 20 years time when they already sold the property, it will become uh, very high in value, eh, enhancing asset value, ensuring quality management, and providing experience uh, professional management services to ensure capital growth of the uh, property okay asset classes eh? uh, some of the classes in in actuality everything can be purchased eh? everything can be purchased through REITs eh? the organization can purchase eh? industrial aspect offices retail uh, residential lodging healthcare diversify of course this type of properties is the one that can generate uh, revenue eh? so if you invest in mosque eh, uh, or a temple it might not uh, generate the revenue that is being hoped for eh? who who wanted to go to the mosque and pay uh, if wanted if i wanted to do prayer here i pay 100 ringgit eh? it's not the profit generating property eh? so most of the Profit generating property is the ones that you target for for read uh, read purchases. Okay, consideration and read eh, uh, type of property diversification the location of the property. I think as a, a real estate uh, graduate or even a real estate student, eh, so we already know 
eh? we already learn a lot eh? regarding this type of things eh? location diversification type of property and others eh? uh, for guaranteed returns uh, yield uh, of course you try to do the cash flow eh? the discounted cash flow and eh? try to find out in five years time ten years time when will you get uh, when will you get the return on the capital that you have invested eh? uh, when will you break even when will you start getting the profit okay issues eh? finding out the issues okay all right uh, so for the summary uh, portfolio property management becomes vital for property investment uh, good property management would guarantee lucrative income for the investors therefore the practice of property management needs to be enhanced and fulfilled to the required standards so uh, investment instruct uh, investment instrument which is highly backed by properties uh, such as REITs needs strategic property management uh, which could link the objectives of the property owner and the investment objectives to undertake uh, strategic portfolio management okay so i think that's about it uh, for today's lecture and i hope you can try to gain some understanding uh, regarding the portfolio management uh, the real estate investment trust uh, in uh, direct and indirect investment and others uh. so not only we we, we manages day-to-day uh, -day operation of properties but we try to broaden up uh, the management of bigger portfolios uh, of course when you went out in the industry afterwards uh, you will be in a higher position uh, because you already have a high qualification like having a bachelor degree from a university uh, people will trust you and put you in this kind of uh, very big responsibilities okay so i think that's about it for today and uh, i will end the lecture with wabillahi topic uh, where they are Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh